Hello and welcome to this special edition of Jerusalem Dateline. I'm Chris Mitchell. Billionaire investor Warren Buffett once called Israel the most promising investment hub outside of the United States. Per capita, the Jewish state has produced more cutting-edge technologies than any other country on Earth. Today, we'll look at how technology in agriculture is making the desert bloom in Israel and around the world. In 1867, Mark Twain toured the land of Israel, known back then as Palestine. Here's how he described it. A desolate country whose soil is rich enough, but is given over wholly to weeds a silent, mournful expanse. There was hardly a tree or a shrub anywhere. Palestine sits in sackcloth and ashes, desolate and unlovely. Today, Mark Twain wouldn't even recognize this land. Out of rocky soil, out of swamps, and even out of deserts, Israelis have created gardens, vineyards, and farms with some of the most innovative techniques in the world. It was just this country with incredible dynamism and energy and excitement and food and people and a sense of family and ultimately a sense of belonging. It's been said that the modern state of Israel was born on the kibbutz. So it's only natural that much of Israel's innovation was born there as well. The kibbutz is the cornerstone in a lot of ways of a lot of things in Israeli society. People came back wanting to create a collective and an equal society. And these kibbutzim became a very, very effective way to defend the land, to start getting young people engaged in agriculture. Remember, Jews were forbidden in most countries of the world to actually own land or to work the land. Jews couldn't be farmers. To all of a sudden see a generation of Jews farming the land in a collective environment, it was, it was incredible. Before Israel even became a state, Jews by the thousands came to live there on communal farms. But when they arrived in the Promised Land, it wasn't exactly flowing with milk and honey. The coastal plains were swampy, the Galilee and the Judean hills were rocky, and the southern half of the country was mostly desert. Since the people of Israel left our homeland 2,000 years ago, the area was mismanaged. So we want to preserve and rehabilitate this holy land. The early Jewish settlers faced a number of obstacles from bad soil to Bedouin raiders. But they faced an even bigger enemy that threatened to destroy the Jewish state before it began. In the early decades of the 20th century, Israel was a breeding ground for mosquitoes carrying malaria. They overtook the coastal plains and the Jordan Valley, the only land available for Jews to buy since the local Arabs had decided it was uninhabitable. In 1920, more than a third of all Jewish residents of Palestine had malaria. So with no other choice, they went to work. They drained the swamps and sprayed the land and changed the flow of water in irrigation canals to interrupt the mosquitoes breeding. They were so successful that a commission from the League of Nations visited Palestine to learn what they did. Less than 20 years after Israel's statehood, the country was officially malaria-free. Once the threat of malaria was gone, Jewish settlers were free to focus on making the desert bloom. In the coastal plains, citrus groves replaced the swamps. And the Jordan Valley, once the center of the malaria epidemic, now became the country's breadbasket. The Negev Desert blossomed with newly planted forests and vineyards. And the Arava, once the most arid part of Israel, became the site of a flourishing vegetable industry. All of this was accomplished in the first 20 years of Israel's statehood. In that time, they more than doubled their standard of living. And now they're using their experience to help other countries. In the 1970s, they created a new breed of cherry tomato that's disease resistant and has a longer shelf life. They also bred a new kind of potato that can be grown in hot, dry climates and irrigated by salt water. These vegetables are now being grown in dry countries like Jordan, Egypt, and Morocco. Israeli scientists not only found ways to grow more crops, 
They also found new ways to preserve them. Grain Pro cocoons provide an inexpensive way for farmers to keep their grain market fresh by keeping out water, air, and insects. The Israeli cocoons are being used in Africa, the Far East, and even Pakistan, a nation with no diplomatic ties to Israel.